Hi, welcome to Strength Reversed. It's Amy. Thank you so much for being here today. I am very excited to share with you a deck that I got as a Christmas gift from my little schmoopykins, my son. And it is the Orion's Animal Tarot by Ambi Sun, or Soon. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And it is a gorgeous deck. So like this video and share with me in the comments what you think of the deck. I'm going to talk about the box and the guidebook and then I'll flip the camera around and show you all of these gorgeous cards. Now I am not an animal deck person but when someone, I, I love getting decks from people that I maybe would not have chosen for myself because I think it's intriguing to know what they think you would like and I've never been disappointed. I've always been nothing but pleasantly surprised at the decks that I have received as gifts. So my son usually picks out things. He's gotten me a couple of cat decks, which are super cute. And I didn't think I'd like them, but I really do. And so I'm expecting to really like this one too. The box is, you know, that's a yes. It's a yes for me. And I love the kind of prismatic, <laughs> if is that a word, um, colors. Here's the back of the box. Now I know, I think this was on Kickstarter a while back. And the box that I have, it says Rockpool Publishing. I am not up to speed on indie versus mass market versus what edition it is. I don't know. <laughs> Could not tell you. But here's what the back of the box says. This animal-themed tarot deck reflects nature through mythical and ethereal means and is rich in animal symbolism, allowing you to spiritually connect with the universe and yourself through the exquisite art of divination. And then it goes on to say that it's suitable for beginners, enthusiasts, and advanced tarot readers. Now, if you are a beginner, these cards have, there's an animal on each card. And if you're a beginner and you're not super familiar with the tarot system or you're just learning the basic meanings and structure of the deck, this might not work for you yet. Um, it could be used though if you really like the deck and you're a beginner or any level of experience. It could be used as an oracle deck and you'll see what I mean when we go through the cards because you could just pick a card to augment a reading with another deck or to pick a card of the day or just a general card for guidance and that's probably how I will use it as I become more familiar with this deck and as I'm getting to know it. But as a beginner learning the tarot, I'm not sure how this might be difficult to learn with, but I'm just for what it's worth. Okay, let me show you. And I'm not mad at this box. I got to tell you, it's nice and sturdy and I'll be keeping it. Here's the guidebook. She's beautiful. It is 204 pages and it is full color, glossy, and smells like ink. Um, so if you are a sniffer, some people are and some people aren't, I definitely am. That's already a plus because it's, you know, smell-o-vision, we like that. It appeals to all of our senses. Um, now, this has an introduction and it does say the meaning of Orions, which I so appreciate when a deck creator takes the time to explain the train of thought. This helps me connect with decks, especially decks that don't have, um, aren't based in RWS, you know, symbology and imagery. So here's what it means. It is one of the seven verses, O Orions, is one of the seven verses used at Vespers during the last days of Advent, the lead up to Christmas. And it means O Rising Sun, it is connected with the Latins, the rising sun in the east, and also the creator said she liked that it was create it was connected to her name. And so I liked learning about that because I do like the creator to spell that out for me and how they arrived at the symbolism in each of the cards. Then it has the ubiquitous how how tarot is structured, how to bond with your tarot. Um, a single card spread, a three card spread, and the Celtic cross. And I could honestly 
be happy not having that in guidebooks that are meant for particular decks because I feel that, you know, there are plenty of, of more general guidebooks that are suitable for learning tarot and learning that information, and I'm not sure why publishers insist on repeating that in every guidebook, but whatever. If you're not into it, just skip past those. And then there's a section for the major arcana and then the four suits. And the suits are named wand, swords, pentacles, and cups. So that's pretty standard. Um, like I said, it's full color. And each section starts with a description of each animal that is on the cards. So for example, the fool is a baby sea turtle and it gives a National Geographic-esque description you know, kind of like what you would find in an encyclopedia. I'm dating myself. What you would find on a Google search, okay? The spiny bush viper is the magician, etc. So it goes through the major arcana animals, and then we start with the actual tarot portion of the guidebook. I personally wish that the animal description was on the same page with the tarot description, so I didn't have to flip back and forth. So we have the baby sea turtle as the fool, and you can see a picture of the card and then some keywords. It gives you a general rundown of the fool and then more specific divinatory meanings in upright and reversed positions. So let me give you an example of what I mean. If we go with the magician, which is the spiny bush viper, it talks about um, them coming from Central Africa and they inhabit rainforests and there is no anti-venom, but that's okay because they're usually not in places where people are um, and etc. That's just a little blurb about them. And the description of the in the tarot portion is a pair of snakes wind together tightly, forming a complex knot around the sword and wand. One head pointing up and the other pointing down, connecting the spiritual and magical realm, material realms. The white lilies above symbolize purity and the red roses below reflect knowledge that comes from worldly experience. Though typically regarded as duplicitous creatures, snakes are symbols of opportunity, necessary transitions, and change in ourselves. And healing, sorry. I really need to have my reading glasses on, so I'm skipping lines and butchering this, but thanks for hanging in there with me. There are also, they are also seen as guides that encourage us to fuel positive change in ourselves. The sword and wand represent the physical and spiritual ways to utilize our potential. The magician reminds us we are well armed to tackle new opportunities and we can use our notable intellect and logic to shape our destiny. And then it has more specific upright and reversed meanings. Now, I really love and appreciate that the creator or the author of this guidebook took the time to explain why the images that were used in the card were chosen. That is what I look for in a guidebook. I want to know why the card looks like that, especially if it's something that deviates from standard RWS imagery. And the I'm not sure if the author or the deck creator wrote this, but it's beautifully written and I appreciate that she's done that. The only thing I would like is more explicit information about why the creator chose the spiny bush viper as the magician. I want to know how that connection was made and what about spiny bush viper says magician. I can maybe put two and two together and make some assumptions, but I don't want to have to do that. I would really like that done for me. So maybe in the future, um, there would be a, an even more complete guidebook, although this guidebook is certainly more than adequate. And I do like that um, there is an explanation of the symbolism on each of the cards. I just want more as far as why that image was chosen. Okay, and then we have the four suits and um, it goes through every card and they are beautiful, so I cannot wait to show you. So I will flip the camera over and I will go into all of our jargon, you know, I'll talk shop about card stock and 
<laughs> and size and, and edging and things like that. So stick around. Okay, here it is, and I'm just going to open this box, and you can see how pretty this box is. I really like the attention to detail here. And the guidebook sits right on top. Now, I love that this is just all in one place. And what I mean by that is, <laughs> you know those boxes that divide the deck into two? I can't stand that. So this is a nice one. It has the ribbon so you can pull the deck out easily. And here is the back of the cards. Absolutely gorgeous. They are silver edged, gilded, but not gold. Gilded, but not golded. And they are just stunning to look at. The size of these cards, I thought, oh, this deck is smaller than I thought, but it's not. It is a standard tarot deck size, as you can see. So it is standard tarot deck. The finish is this lovely matte. It's very smooth and they do not stick together. Well, maybe because of the edging, but they're very easy to shuffle. Now, if you are a riffle shuffler, that might be of a concern to you because these are a little more cardboardish. With a card like this that feels more laminated, it's very pliable and is, is maybe would bend a little, but not a lot. These cards seem like they might crease very easily. That's not a problem for me because I am an overhand shuffler, but if you are not an overhand shuffler and you like to riffle, you might want a different finish if that exists for this deck. So let me just walk through these cards. And this is the Fool, so I'll start there. Let me, that's too much. Okay, that should be good. And I'll show you some up close. This is the Baby Sea Turtle Fool. The color is just beautiful. I like that the deck has a dark color scheme, but still very bright, bold colors. Here's that spiny bush viper. So as you can see, there is a different animal on each card, and this continues all the way through the deck. And this is what I meant when I said that it could be used as a, oh, I love that. I love elephants. This is so gorgeous. This might be my favorite card so far. It's my favorite card so far. But you might be able to use this as an oracle deck as well. The Hierophant. Now, if you are an astrology person, I'm assuming this is like Aries, is the Hierophant Aries, who the hell knows? Some of you do. The Lovers, the Chariot, Justice, the Wise Owl, I love that. Hermit. Oh, this scarab, a beetle. That is gorgeous. So strength is number 11 in this deck. And I didn't even notice justice is number 8. I'm down with either way. Just, a, you know, 8 or 11. I'm good. The Hanged One. Okay, now here's the Death card, and Death is one of those cards, it has to be a good Death card. In fact, I want to look up what this says. Um, oh God. Axolotl? They are a unique species of salamander found exclusively in the waters of, oh geez, near Mexico City. 
Physiologically fascinating, they are often used in research into cells and limb regrowth. Oh gosh. Anyway, there's more information. I'm, this is fascinating to me. I'm going to have to read more about that card. Temperance. The Devil. This looks like a pitcher plant. But I guess this is what we're looking at here. I like that. The Tower. The star, the moon, the sun. Oh, look at that. I love that. Is that a fly? That's the cutest. And the world. And look how gorgeous this Ace of Wands is. Let me back out a little more because I feel like I'm chopping off these cards. Okay. That dragonfly. Now, I did read about the dragonfly, and I did not know that the dragonfly spends most of its life on the ground, and it's only later in life that it really starts flying. Two of Wands. These are sticking together a little, but once you... go through the cards, they will stop doing that. Oh my gosh, I love peacocks. Now I'm getting excited about this animal deck. You know, I'm not usually an animal deck person. Whatever that is, it's ugly. That's cute. The page, I like how the page looks a little bit playful. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. King of Wands, a lion. That's a good choice. Ace of Pentacles. I like that ants are in a suit that is related to work. That seems appropriate. They are a little sticky at first. <laughs> this reminds me of a certain episode of South Park I'm not going to embellish. Okay, the King of Pentacles is a bull. I can see that. Very Taurus-y. Ace of Cups, two penguins. Penguins are very interesting when it comes to mating and um, working together. And so I, I like that choice for the two of cups. How cute is that?
There are lots of insects in this deck. Um, let's look that up. It is a narwhal. <laughs> I do really love the colors here. And I do really love that the animals aren't doing anything people-ish. So you can see how you would be able to use this as an oracle deck if that's, if that's your thing. Or if you're not in a place where you feel like you can, the Queen of Cups, a snail, where you can um, work with this as a tarot. I love a flamingo. I love seeing them when I'm, you know, at Disney or something. A swan. If you are wondering whether the Three of Swords is stabbing anything, it is not. So that might be a good thing. Is that a sloth? Rest. I'll have to read about this one because I always see the Six of Swords as a guardian angel kind of card. And this thing looks not like a guardian angel. Okay, well this this starfish is has seen better days. So if you don't like that stabbing imagery, it's just there. So more birds than I expected and more insects than I expected. Okay, well, I hope you liked that walkthrough. I am very excited to work with these cards. They're not anything that I that I expected to be so excited about, but I am. And make sure you let me know in the comments what you think of this deck, if you think you would work with it, if you own it, if you like it, don't like it. Um, I'm interested in your thoughts because I know there are a lot of animal deck lovers out there. And I love the aesthetic of the deck first of all. So let me just say that. Anyway, thank you guys for being here and I will see you next time. Like or subscribe.